What's up guys? Welcome to JG on the Move and I am in the car with one of my dearest and closest friends in Los Angeles but not only is she one of my great friends she is also an unbelievable creative director. She works with all of the superstars here in Los Angeles including JLo, Madonna, all these amazing people. First, say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I am super excited to be a part of this with Jonathan. Um, his vision for this company is is something that I think everybody that wants to actually do something with their lives, just in general, right. you know, I, I love the idea that you want to that you want people to understand that they can be their own rock star at any level yes. in life. I think that's extremely powerful, and I think people underestimate themselves uh, more often than they celebrate themselves. Yes. So I want to know, since you have worked with, uh, I mean, good Lord, if you guys can see, she's been on every award show. She has directed, uh, I mean, so many of what JLo's done all through the years. How long have you been working with JLo? Uh, a little over 13 years now. 13 years. So, so many things that you guys see is her work, right? Um, and TV shows like uh, Dancing with the Stars, yeah, uh, so many commercials. But what I want to know is what do all of these superstars, I mean, we're not talking about little little stars, we're talking about mega stars, J-Lo, Madonna, what do these people have in common um, that really taps into their greatness? I think an, I think a big aspect of it is the fact that they, uh, they have a real goal. They have an absolute 100% goal for their right. life. Okay. And I think a good portion of it is the fact that they really want to be a part of a culture that literally changes lives. Like whenever I work with Jennifer, like it's one of the things that's always wonderful about working with her is the fact that she is constantly not just thinking about how something can look great on her, but at the end of the day, what is this gonna to do to her audience? How is she going to get them excited? How is she gonna get them motivated? How does okay. she get them to feel empowered or feeling great about life? Same thing with Madonna. I mean, both women are extremely intelligent and they also understand that in the idea of becoming an artist that there needs to be something behind your artistry a voice like you it's not just a matter of singing it's a matter of what do you want to say okay. like what do you what kind of point of view do you want to have that's going to make a good change in the world so they so you you they've tapped into uh, not only their greatness but they've also tapped into well for them I mean now that they've been going for so long they really have develop this into a message, something that's very important to them. It's not just the music, right? But I want to figure out, like, you know, there's so many people say, you know, they compare themselves, as I always say, you know, Britney Spears to Christina Aguilera, and, you know, you're not a Christina Aguilera, but you're a Britney Spears. It's okay. Don't yeah. compare yourself to other people, right? Um, I think comparison is probably one of the most damaging states of mind that any one person can do to themselves. Right. Because then you're always thinking about what you're lacking versus being able to provide what you actually have to give. Right. And so what do these people, so somebody's sitting there going, well, you know, I'm doing all this work. Why me? Why not me? And why is it happening so great for these people? What do you say to those people? You know, there's always going to be people where things come natural. Mm -hmm. And things may come really easy. And for people that actually have to work hard. Damn those people. I know, right? <laughs> but I have to say that there is something to be said. When things are too easy, for one, I don't feel like a level of satisfaction is ever met. Right. Because you don't really ever have to work hard to feel the sense of satisfaction. Right. Right. Which is why I see people with, people with that state of mind, um, they're more inconsistent with their lives. Right. Whereas people, again, like Jennifer and Madonna, if there's anything I can say about both those women, is that their work ethic is impeccable. Both yes. Madonna and Jennifer are not natural singers. They really have had to work extremely hard to gain whatever vocal ability that they have. Okay. And then along with that, be able to prove that they have something to offer. So that has really translated into longevity. Right. Because they don't understand anything else than to be able to give their best. So their work and their level of uh, give to their to everything that they do always sits at the maximum. And there's never there's never a, a low side or a lazy side to these individuals. Yes. They just literally charge at a hundred. When things are easy for people, they kind of like, well, it's fine. This is good enough, and they start to settle. And 
you can't settle in this industry or no. any industry. In any, in any facet of life, you, you cannot, cannot settle or otherwise you just become like the muck and mire on the side of the road in that little pothole, right? Um, you hit exactly what my, my, my thought and my question was, was their work ethic. It is something that is so important in any field, in any facet of life, including yourself. Yeah. Your work ethic has never been able to stop. It's like you have to work harder and harder because there's always someone underneath you who is younger, who has more energy, and hungrier. who is hungrier, and they are going for it. So your work ethic has to be on point at all times. Absolutely. Yes? You have to be the person that people can't live without. Yes. And that's not a, a lazy not personality. Easy. <laughs> that's it's not, not. An easy thing. Oh my God, no. I mean, I was I was very fortunate to have had been mentored by Kenny Ortega, who is literally a, a consummate workaholic. And so I learned from a workaholic on becoming a workaholic. Right. And I'm I'm really grateful for that state of mind because it's really hard for me to deliver subpar work. It's really hard for me to ever give something that's not clearly my best my best self, right. my best ethic, my best choices, which means I have to be that much more uh, aware of everything that I do for myself. Right. That means taking care of myself to make sure that I'm that I am sleeping well so I can get the best results so I can have a clear mind that means I have to be able to you know watch the people that I'm surrounding myself by so that I'm Ooh, not important so, word right there you know knowing who you surround yourself with it's your team like your team is everything and either you have a team that helps you rise or a team that's literally gonna suck you down or even your friendships the people that you hang out with on a daily basis right? one thousand percent and I think that's really uh, I think I would I would really attribute that to how you view yourself. Yes. I think people really do attract a good aspect of who they are. And so when you are surrounded by people that are not so motivated, well, are you? Or if you are motivated, more than likely you're gonna have proactive go-getters that right. want it just as much as you do. Because if not, you're constantly playing a tug of war. You're constantly trying to convince. See, that's why I, I surround myself with you, right? <laughs> I get inspired by Liz Imperio. Oh my God, this woman's crazy. So I have a question for you. How, at what age did you tap into your greatness and what was your process like for you personally? Because you've got a huge responsibility to be able to um, help these people who are at their greatness level you know, how did, where did you find your greatness in all I, of this? I, I, I really have to say, I think it's my mom. I would really attribute that to my parenting. Um, my She's mom, a powerful woman, right? She is a crazy, formidable individual that, you know, she came from a communist country. So the, her survival mode is always set on high. And my mom always believes that in this world, we should be able to give ourselves options and choices. And that you shouldn't just feel stuck into just one thing. She could have been stuck in Cuba. She chose to step away. She chose to leave everything behind to find a better life. So for her to be able to instill that sense of uh, never settling, that there's always something more in life to offer and to be able to receive if you're willing to look versus just falling into the routine of just being who you are. So at a very young age, I mean, I, I've had my mom literally like take me to some of the most strictest teachers on the face of the planet just because she always wanted me to surround, be surrounded by structure, discipline, and honesty. She never wanted me to be misled. She so wanted you, me to be able to deal with life head on. Right. So you started off as a dancer. Yes. And so that just kind of molded. Was there a point in your life where you're like, I want to be a creative director? Or did that just kind of the flow? <laughs> that was the, the furthest world? thing from my, from, my, from my life ever. Because all I wanted to do was dance. All I ever wanted to be was on a stage and perform. Performing for me was like my, my addicting high. Right. And to be able to get an immediate response from my audience or to feel a connection with another artist on a stage. Like that sets my whole body on a cellular level on like level 10. It just, it just, it just electrifies me. But as I got older, it wasn't until I met Kenny Ortega. Kenny was the one that actually uh, offered me a different option to a lifestyle that I didn't even know existed. I didn't even know what assisting a choreographer even meant. Let alone, by the time I was now 19 years old, now I've been working with Kenny for three or four years as an assistant, still wanting to be in front of the camera and still struggling with the tug of war of the two sides of the coin, right? And uh, at that point, my knee started to give out. 
And it oddly enough came at the same time that he offered me my very first world tour with Gloria Stefan. I was 19 years old. Wow. I mean, to choreograph for a megastar like that on a on a comeback tour from an accident that almost took out her life. Right. I mean, there was so much going on at that time. And and to think that Kenny had that much faith, not just in my talent, but that what I was able to be able to do for this woman who is a mega star, Huge. who is a, a beacon of light and of hope now for so many people of what is possible. Because she wanted to show the world that nothing was ever going to shut her down. Right. Even a bus accident that almost paralyzed her. Literally almost paralyzed her. It was absolutely one of the most life-altering experiences for me. And what it really taught me was that my role here is not a matter of just fulfilling my role creatively because this new creative outlet showed me I could be so much more. And that I can give so much more. And then it showed me that I had more longevity in this industry. And I think that was the coolest thing is that things just keep showing up. I didn't expect to ever be a dance teacher. I never expected to be an artistic director. I never expected to be a director, a choreographer, an editor, a motivational speaker. Like none of these things were in my path. They showed up as my life kept evolving. It's all about the flow. Things just, as things begin to unfold, you know, it's so important that, that uh, you, it, it begins to blossom and flower, right? 1000%. And that's where uh, you start to see where possibility exists. I, I love using this one particular quote because to me it, it always resonates. Uh, Mark Twain once said that there are two important days in a person's life. The day that you're born and the day you find out why. Well, that's my life's pursuit, is to always make sure I'm fulfilling my why. Why am I still doing anything? Why do I still teach? Why do I still dance? Why do I still create? Like, why? Because why is by far the most personal question you can ever ask. It's easier to say, what do you do? Oh, well, what I do is blah, 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 blah. Well, how do you do it? Well, I used to go to school. Like, those processes are on the surface and they're easy to answer. But when somebody asks you why, why? like, <clears throat> why do you love? Why do you love this person? Why do you love? Then we're actually talking about personal. Now we're talking about depth. Now we're talking about reason. Reason, exactly. And purpose. And, and, and that's a thing, like you, you definitely need to lead your life with a purpose to be able to have a goal in sight, to be able to pursue, to be able to fulfill until things start to step in your way. And what people I think miss out on the greatest thing is sometimes the things that step in their way for some people People think that it's, why is this happening to me? Right. No, nothing is happening to you. It is actually happening for you. Yes. And when you can separate one from the other, oh my gosh, then you start to realize that everything is a lesson. There is yes. no bad in this world. There's actually nothing but good. And when you start to understand that, I get more excited when things go, you know, all wrong than that's things that go find, all right because that's where the gems are. That's where the gems are. That's where Biggest the Biggest mistakes are. in the world are from, you know, from I mean, the biggest uh, discoveries are from mistakes, right? Oh my gosh, I think those so, are the best things on the face of the planet. I'm so grateful when they occur. All right, so we're about to pull back in, and uh, I just do you have one more thing you want to say? Oh, I, I, I think I think the one thing that I would I would definitely pass on to anyone is you know don't ever doubt who you are. You have to once you learn to accept everything about who you are mm -hmm. it doesn't mean it, it doesn't stop you from continue to discover more about you but you have to start believing yes. in who you are and yes. I know it to a degree it may sound cliche or kitschy but it's it really still rings true because until you learn to love who you are how can you expect anyone to love you right uh, if you don't respect yourself how do you expect anyone to respect you if you don't believe in your talent how do you expect anybody to believe in your talent the faith has you have to learn to stand in faith the minute, and faith is not just a religious concept. It is a self-ingrained, self-evolved, self-understanding uh, that faith about what you are in every capacity level means something and that it can make a difference. In ah! <laughs> ah! And on that, we... <laughs> I love it. The timing is awesome. Uh, where did we turned upside down or were you there? Well, <laughs> anyway, thank you so much. Everybody say bye to Liz. Thank you so much for being here with You're us so today welcome. and for Always sharing with people. All right. Yeah. Bye, Come guys. On.